Okay, all right. Is everyone ready for the main event? So welcome back, Fail Safe Investors. Welcome, Fail Safe Wealth, my page. If this is your first time to my page, I'm Terry. This is the second edition to a series that I've been doing for a while now called Battle of the Brands, where I take two companies in the same sector or operating on the same fundamentals, and I pretty much compare them against each other through basic stock analysis or stock evaluations and see which one will come out on top when I put them head to head. So usually I do two separate videos of each of the companies and then at the end of the week I compare these two companies. A couple days ago I did Starbucks and today we're gonna do Dunkin' Brands, better known as Dunkin' Donuts or Baskin Robbers because both of them are under Dunkin' Brands. So let's just get into it. Let's go. start off this video by saying like I highly doubt anyone watching this video will probably go and invest in Dunkin Donuts or Dunkin Brands just because how many conversations do you have with someone saying like oh yeah did you see Dunkin Donuts or the stock uh, they're doing well or they're doing good they're up and this that and the other it's just not a topic that people really talk about it's not a hot stock right now or it has it ever really been a hot stock but Duncan Brands is actually pretty simple. So they have 13,000 Duncan Donuts stores and they have 8,000 Baskin Robbins stores. And then they also operate through advertisement segments. But the thing is that they don't actually own or operate any of its stores. So Duncan Brands is actually a franchise. So what they do is they literally just franchise out all of their stores. So if you see a Dunkin' Donuts store or a Baskin Robbins store, it's usually franchised out by someone that went out and pretty much paid for the franchise, but they receive franchisee fees from these people that franchise their stores. So that is a source of revenue. And also they have, um, they said they received like $640 million from the Dunkin' Donuts franchise brand. and the other percentages from like the Baskin Robbins and the advertisement segment. And I would definitely say the advertisement segment shockingly has more revenue than the actual Baskin Robbins segment. I know, shocker, right? But let's just not get mixed up in like how they make the money because remember the bigger picture is the fundamentals, the financial statements, the management, and pretty much how this company operates. And it's not enough hype behind this company to make it move up in a very drastic way. So when you're looking at a company, you have to kind of categorize it as like either a growth stock or a value stock, or like maybe it's just like a stock. Um, everything isn't an either or, this isn't a black and white world. So you're not just going to say if it's not a growth stock, it's a value stock. But there are ways to look at a stock and just kind of know like, okay, this is a growth stock. And like I mentioned in a couple of videos, generally if a company isn't paying a dividend then it will probably be in its growth stages and it's trying to grow but Duncan Brand has been around for a while uh, they do not pay a dividend right now but they were paying a dividend uh, at the beginning of this year prior to like the the stock market taking a dive in March they were paying a dividend of like two percent something around there now since Duncan Brands isn't really that large of a company they were able to show a earnings per share of like two dollars per share they only have like 82 million shares outstanding or in circulation duncan brands ticker symbol dnkn has a market cap of around five billion uh they have a revenue of one billion dollars not big at all they have 1114 full-time employees for the whole company so this isn't a big company but the reason why it's like that is because they operate out of a small space because they really just franchise everything out so when you put that up against starbucks yeah they're smaller but their revenue is also smaller uh now usually when i, when I see a company with those type of metrics as duncan brands have i would put them in like a growth company category but there's not no hype behind Duncan Brands. They they have brand recognition, but like I said, no one's really looking at Duncan Brands and saying, oh yeah, I'm thinking about investing into Duncan Brands. The stock has a beta of 0.90, 
So that means it's less volatile than the stock market. So also that's another sign that this company isn't going to be swinging up no time soon in the near future. Now, when you do look at Duncan Brand's chart and compare it against the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, um, it did better performance wise than the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. But the NASDAQ, of course, beat it. But the NASDAQ has pretty much been beating all the other indexes. So that's not any surprise because you have companies like Amazon and the NASDAQ and other technology companies in the NASDAQ that pretty much pushes that above any other index. So it's gonna outperform anything right now. Duncan Brands, uh, I would definitely say if you don't already own Duncan Brands, my recommendation would be like, just don't really go buy it thinking that it's gonna grow. Don't buy it as like a dividend play. I always say if you're going to buy a company, you should definitely understand it, know it, and, and love it, love the product. But unless you really like Duncan Brand's product or business model or whatever, I'm not saying don't buy it because you might have your own reason for purchasing a stock that I might not see. I'm just saying do a little bit more research. But this is just what I've been able to find on Duncan Brand's. Uh, they don't really have any bad publicity. They do have a deal that is currently inked with Uber Eats. So if you are a shareholder of Uber, then this will benefit you also. But they have a deal with Uber Eats to expand Dunkin' Donuts delivery service. So they will start delivering coffee to people's door through Uber Eats. And it's a, a contract with Uber Eats. So that's that's pretty good. I would say that they are, they are innovative. But uh, it's just not enough there behind Dunkin' Brands for me to invest in. Like I said, they had... $1 billion in revenue. Now, when you do look at their income statement, which we will go through in a minute, you'll see that, yes, their revenue have grown from like, I think, $800 million in 2015 to like $1.3 billion, maybe $1.2 billion in 2019. So, yes, it is going up, but it's not enough. And then when you compare it to its market cap of like $5 billion, it's not enough for me to get behind a company like this. It's just not enough for me, I'm gonna be honest. And it's not because it's selling for $65 a share because I really wouldn't invest based on the price of per share, but I'd invest on the market cap, which is it's a pretty small market cap. And the revenue that the company is bringing in is also pretty small. And it, it's not volatile enough. Mm -hmm. not, you know, a lot of people wouldn't want to buy a company that is volatile, but I do want a little bit of volatility to my company because you do have upper swings in volatility. So you, you would want a little bit of volatility, at least me personally. But, you know, we can't end a video like this. Um, let's go ahead. Let's go into the financial statements and see what we got. So Duncan Brands, ticker symbol DNKN, is selling for around $65 a share currently. They have a market cap of about five billion. They have a price to earnings ratio of about a multiple of 22, which uh, will be considerably high for a company like this. And have a price to earnings growth rate of eight, which is, is really high. That is really, really high. They don't pay a dividend and they have earnings per share of $2 per share. So just to give you like a brief overlook of the company. So when we look at Duncan Brand's financial statements, I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible so i'm pretty much going to give you the need to know about all of the financial statements and try to consolidate them as much as i can so i've already mentioned in this video that dunkin donuts made a revenue of about 1 billion so it's 1.3 billion to be exact and from net revenue they had a net income of around 242 million dollars now that's the income statement but when we look at the balance sheet they have $707 million in cash on hand and about like $900 million in total current assets, which is assets that could be liquidated within a year or less. And they have like $582 million in liabilities that's due this year or this current year. But when you look at the total assets, they have like $3.9 billion in total assets, short term and long term but they have 4.5 billion in total liability short term and long term. So that's not a pretty good balance sheet, especially for a company this size. Now I'm not saying that this company's gonna go out of business anytime soon, as long as they have people paying their franchise fees and all of that. Now they do have a revolving door when it comes to like the revenue, like money will always continue to come in as long as people operate the Dunkin' Donuts shop. But I'm just saying how they balance in the balance sheet isn't the best. Uh, but like I said, this isn't a huge company. They don't really own any stores or anything like that. They don't own or operate any of the stores or anything like that. So you gotta take that into consideration. But like I said, they had $242 million in 
net income. But when it comes to cash flow, they had $37 million in capital expenditures. And when you subtract that from the net income of $242 million, you're left with $202 million of free cash flow. Um, so that's not bad. And like I mentioned on earlier, they only have like 82 million shares. So when you take that and spread it across uh, each share, it should equal up to like $2 earnings per share. So <clears throat> it's not a bad company, but like I mentioned before, you definitely want to invest in a company that's profitable and you can take part in the growth of that company becoming more profitable and you can pretty much reap the reward from that. Now I mentioned earlier in this video, I wouldn't invest in this company even if it's like a dividend play. There are a lot of better companies out there that you can invest in for a dividend play. There's a lot of better companies that you can invest in for a growth stock. It's just, like I said, the hype isn't behind Dunkin' Donuts or Dunkin' Brands. Uh, but which one would I pick between Starbucks and Dunkin' Brands? Well, that's to be decided in a couple of days. So stick with me. Another episode will be coming pretty soon where we do the main event, Battle of the Brands, where I compare Dunkin' Brands to Starbucks brand and see which one will come out on top. Which one would I put my money behind? Which one am I going to get a bang for my buck? So next time on Battle of the Brands with Fail Safe World. Well, that's it for this video. My name is Terry. Please hit the like button if you can. Comment down below. Share this video if you can. Uh, share any of my videos. Help people out. I'm trying to get people to understand investing isn't as hard as people make it sound. It's not a gamble. It doesn't have to be a gamble. You can take the gamble aspect out of it just by knowing more about these companies. And I'm trying to expand my channel and bring you more content. Uh, with more range involving like topics that's going on right now in the stock market world or in the, in the investment world that cover a lot of topics. Um, I did a video on Hertz uh, like a couple days ago. Please go check that out. And if you aren't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. But till next time, let's get it. Let's do it.